Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a very specific Faraday's Law problem. It's one of the hardest ones, and that's why we're looking at it right now. It's the moving bar example. So the problem might look something like this. So I have a metal wire here, and then I have a metal bar laying across it that's moving this way to the left with a velocity of 2 meters per second. The width of this section of wire is 4.5 meters. We have a magnetic field pointing out of the page all over the place. And that magnetic field has a value of 50 Tesla. And let's say there's a resistor here at the end of this wire hoop with resistance 100 ohms. Before this thing starts moving, let's say there's no current. But once it starts moving, I want you to find both the magnitude and the direction of current I. And so let me tell you, this is Faraday's law. The reason why is because I have a magnetic flux, because my magnetic field is passing through an area right here. That's the area we're talking about. So because we have a changing flux, the flux is decreasing because if you want to think of it as this rectangle is getting smaller, the flux is going to be decreasing. Because we have a changing flux, it means we're going to use Faraday's law, which is this equation, V-induced induced voltage, equals negative n delta flux over delta t. And so to find the magnitude of the current, we're gonna find the voltage first, and then eventually use Ohm's law, V equals I times R, to find the current. But first we have to find the voltage. Since I don't say how many loops, we're assuming it's one. Another thing I like to do is, I like to ignore this negative sign right here because that just tells me about the direction, and to find the direction, I like to use the right hand rule. So I'm going to ignore that for right now. Then the delta flux part, remember delta flux is magnetic field times area final minus magnetic field times area initial divided by time. And one more thing I'll say, since this shape is a rectangle and area equals length times width, then what we can say is that the induced voltage is, I'm just gonna ignore the one, magnetic field times length times width final minus B times length times width initial divided by the time. Now if I think about what I know here, I know my magnetic field, it's 50. I don't know the length because that would be this length right here, which I don't have. I know the width, we said it was 4.5 meters. And then as far as the initial and the final goes, well, magnetic field is staying the same and the width is staying the same, 4.5, but obviously the length is changing. The length is the only one changing. So for that reason, what you're going to see me do is you're going to see me factor out the things that don't change, B and W, magnetic field and width, leaving me with L final minus L initial, still divided by time. Now I don't know time, I don't know L final, and I don't know L initial, but what I want you to realize is that this right here is the same thing as distance over time, which is velocity. So in other words, the answer is just going to be B times W times v. And one more thing I'll say, usually the equation you'll see online for this is negative n b l v, which is basically the same equation. I'm just saying that n is 1 and I replaced l with w, which that doesn't matter. It's still a distance. So what I'm trying to say is if you want to use this formula right from the get-go, that would be a good idea, especially once you see it's the moving bar problem. So anyways, b is 50, w is 4.5, velocity is 2. I just have to plug this in a calculator and I'll get 450 volts. And that's the voltage, which I didn't want. I wanted the current. And current equals voltage divided by resistance from Ohm's law, which means it's going to be 450 divided by R is 100. So we'll get a current of 4.5 and the units are amps. And then one more thing, we still have to figure out the direction. Well, in order to figure out the direction, what I like to say is I like to try and figure out the change in flux. And the change in flux is decreasing. The flux is decreasing out of the page, you could say. And the reason why is because as the bar moves in, the area is getting smaller, decreases the flux. And Faraday's and Lenz's law will basically tell you that we want the flux to go back to normal. So what the wire is going to do is it's going to make its own magnetic field pointing out of the page to get us back to normal. This is the created magnetic field, the created B field. And then to use the right hand rule here, 
I just point my thumb in the direction of the created B field, which is towards me, out of the page, and then I curl my fingers, and that's the direction of the induced current. My fingers, probably flip for the camera, but my fingers are curling counterclockwise, so the current is going to be counterclockwise for the direction. And that's it for this very specific Faraday's Law problem. Hopefully that helps. If not, please post your questions in the comments section. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.